Hi, AccuWeather.com meteorologist Joe Bastardi. Monday morning, uh, global sea ice report here. And uh, you can see we're clearly above uh, 2008 and 2007. Uh, you see what that 2005 is? I think that's where we're going to be next year. All right, we're going to recover dramatically here uh, with the uh, cold that is coming over the next uh, 9 to 12 months. And I think next year uh, you're going to see the latest start to the sea ice melt that we've seen in a long time, even later than this particular year. Uh, you know, we may, see, we may see this up in here for a while and then come down and be in here. And that's simply because of uh, you know, what uh, my studies have showed. And we'll see if I'm right. Now, I was right about this this year. All right. Did not get down below here. And you can see uh, the objective, all the objective uh, looks here are all above. So if people want to say, oh, well, they, they keep finding some metric to make, it th make you think it's lower than what it actually is, and, uh, you know, I, I, I saw what was on our site a few days ago, and I'm the guy that said this is where it's going to wind up. I heard uh, people from the, when this was plummeting like this, oh, it's going down way down here. And, again, next year, it's not going to get back to normal. That, that shouldn't happen for another 20 or 30 years, but we should be back up in here uh, next year. And the, the higher you climb away from your low point, the harder it is to get back. And then I fully expect 20, 30, uh, some of those years beyond, to be a little bit above normal in here in the northern hemisphere. You can see where we've been going, though, the last 30 years down in here. But let's remember that in the southern hemisphere, overall, we've been going up. And global sea ice is running below normal now. And you see these, uh, the effects of the, uh, the, the warm PDO, the cumulative warm PDO in these El Ninos have been bringing it down. But this did not reach as low as it did a couple years ago. And you know, I think you'll see that I'm going to be right about this. Again, the southern hemisphere, uh, in response, should be turning back down the other way. And again, I think it has to do, I've explained this before, I have a video on it, has to do with the distortion of the global temperature. Not so much a change in the overall temperature, because after all, we're not really measuring the amount of energy. Uh, that's the thing. We don't, we don't have a grip on the energy budget, all right, where we can see, well... Uh, is a net outgoing uh, energy greater or less or whatever. I'm looking at stratospheric temperatures. There's been no sign of this pronounced stratospheric uh, cooling that was supposed to be placed or uh, supposed to be going on. And if I see that in a widespread fashion, I say, okay, well, the only way that's going to happen is if the trop troposphere, where we live down here, is actually expanding enough. The column in the troposphere expands and you contract the stratosphere so the stratosphere cools. It's not happening. In fact, Looks like it's going the other way, which is interesting. Now, I'm putting together a paper. I have to go speak in San Antonio, Texas, or actually Bastrop, Texas, okay, uh, in a couple of weeks. And uh, I'm doing a bunch of different things. But I was noticing last night that the last 10 years have certainly been warm across the country, okay? Now, it's interesting in that we've put a whole bunch of new thermometers out there, okay? And we've also cleaned the SO2 out of the air which is interesting because that means uh, SO2 really cuts down on incoming radiation. And, uh, you know, we have dry ground, dry air. Your temperature could really go bouncing up and down with the urban. Look, look at this out in Las Vegas. Most of that is because <laughs> most, the, most of this and this is because you've built up these cities. We have a lot of thermometers in the cities, and it doesn't get nearly as cool at night as it did back in the 1930s and 40s. And speaking of the 1930s, look how warm the country was in the 30s. Right. So you had a core of warmth across the country in the 30s. It's interesting in that. And this is even without satellites. All right. That where we had the density of the population over here, where we can measure temperatures better. All right. than we were measuring out here. We see it's actually been cooler over here than it was in the 30s and 40s. How about that? The big warming has been up in areas where we had less data during this time. All right, isn't that interesting? All right, I know it's not a global sea ice report, but look at that. It's funny what happens when you look back, okay? All right, that's it for now. You see where the status is. We're at the bottom of the ice melt season. We're gonna see next year this time. It'll be interesting to see who's right about this, all right? Because after all, wasn't it too, well, first I remember, I remember in 2007, there was speculation by 2010 we get rid of the Arctic sea ice, but you know, okay, we'll give them the extra three years. All right, so we're going to see where we are in 2013, see who's right about this. You know, I'm smirking.
I think it's a done deal. You watch. You enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you get.